Hello, everybody, and thank you very much for joining me for another EBULED uh, special. And basically, just wanted to start off by saying thank you very much to everybody who replied and sent their well wishes and just words of encouragement uh, from April's uh, EBULED uh, posting. And as I talked about my plans and I wanted to go full time as a commission painter and and it was well received and people started sending me in some uh, quotes to do for their projects, which I'm really, really happy about. So I can't thank those people enough because without those quotes, you know, there is no commission based work for me to do. So the more work, the merrier, basically. So um, so thank you very much to people like David Schooley in the US for really being a very supportive person and uh, and providing me with lots of wonderful projects to work on with him. Uh, also, Matthias in Germany and uh, many other people, Tim Baxter, of course, Carnifex, uh, his wonderfully generous uh, offerings in uh, the Slanesh 40K Army that I'm just wrapping up now for him and some other really exciting projects that I would like to work with him on in the future. So that sounds very exciting, like a Gene Stiller cult army. That would be awesome. I love those hybrid figures in the Patriarch on the throne and on the Magus and all that kind of stuff. So I'm really, really excited about doing those and sharing those with you guys as I go along. Sorry that I haven't really been sharing a lot of the stuff I've been doing in progress with the Selenesh Army. It's just that I've been so busy uh, either painting or making videos and that kind of thing. As, you, as you've just seen recently, there's like been four videos uploaded in the last four days <clears throat> we'll get to that in a moment but um, firstly yeah I just wanted to say thank you very much to everybody for being very helpful supportive and um, and just being very encouraging about the whole thing it's been a little bit scary at first now I'm really on my own like there's no <clears throat> no more <clears throat> kind of part-time work that I'm doing this is it like this is basically whatever I make out of this is what's going to cover the bills so Thank you very much to all those people out there who have um, supported me. Uh, special mention to, to Whiskey and Wizards because he put me in contact with a couple of people that have provided me with uh, some work, which is great. So thanks again, Ben, for that, mate. Really appreciate it. And to a lot of other people too, a lot of people who just sort of just sent me messages or asked for quotes and that kind of thing. No, no matter how big or small it was, it doesn't matter. If you just got one big centerpiece model you want to get painted, Great. If you've got an entire army you want to get done, fantastic. Just get in touch with me at the Crown of Command podcast at gmail.com and we can go from there. <clears throat> and also, I want to thank the amazing patrons. So, patrons on my Patreon. Bit of a tongue twister for me, but um, we have 42 people. Some have been here since the start. Some have just recently joined, like uh, Minnesota Ed from uh from the YouTube channel he's just joined me very recently I've got um uh, other other guys that have contacted me about joining because of they want to learn more about painting and I've got spe uh, special tiers now set up for that so if you just want to come along and support me and get some painting lessons I've got two tiers now so one's like a 30 minute lesson and one's a 60 minute lesson one on one uh through the discord I have a Nitro account, which gives me uh, like uh, up to 4K uh, streaming capabilities. I can go up to like 1080, I think, with my setup at the moment. I don't have a 4K uh, camera, but it should provide very clear, uh, very, you know, uh, very sort of uh, very smooth uh, streaming on that. It's I found that to be the best way I can share uh, what I'm working on and, and talking with people. Now, I've had one lesson with George, George in the UK, a bit of shout out to you, mate. It was really good to talk to you about your Space Orc project for the Old World Army Challenge. Uh, we worked together about that and he came away thinking, wow, that's I've just learned so much already. I think George would uh, would, would would be quite happy to come forward and uh, and say that in the comments that yeah, he came away with a lot more information just in an hour. <clears throat> and just were talking to me about certain techniques and I painted up like basically an orc's face and, um, you know, told him the colors and the process and that kind of thing. And he's gone away now and he's been practicing on his space orcs uh, so that next month when we come to meet each other again, he's he can show me some of his progress. And I hope 
and I, I really love and, you know, obviously sharing and seeing progress in people's painting. That's wonderful for me as a teacher. So if that's something that interests you, you're not interested in the commission side of things, if you just want to sit with me and we'll go through things like painting banners or painting whatever, whatever you want to do. It doesn't have to be games worship related. It could be anything. I've, I've, I've worked in painting for over 30 years. I've done a lot of infinity, a lot of confrontation. So there's a lot of different styles in there um, so that I can cover that as well. So if you want um, my expertise, I'm here for you. Just get in touch. And uh, you can look at the links in the video description and they'll be there to send you over to Patreon where you can check out the tiers yourself and I'll add more uh, if people request. If people want more tiers and different things, please let me know and I'll add those, no problem. So that's all the thank yous uh, for the 42 pat patrons, for the people who reached out and sent me commissions. Thank you, you're my basically my, my, my lifeline now. Uh, without you guys, um, I'll be, I'll be, well, I'll be really struggling at the moment. So thank you from, uh, on behalf of myself and my wife for that and my little boy, Leo. Okay. Uh, now as the title of the video de <laughs> description says 911, it's not a, not an emergency. Um, I will just quickly cover that because I was, I was a bit, um, bit uncertain whether to breach this subject with you guys because you probably think I've, I've cracked it and uh, finally uh, after all these years uh, or after all these all this time stuck in this room painting by myself I've finally uh, finally gone gone mad and uh, I've, I've start spruiking out some kind of prophecy or something like that or whatever but basically just very quickly um uh, I think it was in, let's see, I, I finished my work in April. I think it would have been 2022 in December. <clears throat> I used to take my son to school uh, every day before work because, I, you know, I, I start work late. So I take him to these uh, kindergarten, that kind of thing. And um, in the morning, and I wasn't really looking at it, it's just every time I looked at the, my clock, I used to take him to school and come back home and look at my phone, 9-11 would appear on the phone as the time. And 9-11 would be this reoccurring number that would pop up all the time. And just without even me consciously thinking about it, look at the clock, 9-11, look at the sign, 9-11. And it just kept on going. And the frequency of this became so incredible that it just wasn't a coincidence anymore. It just, yeah, it was very hard to explain. I didn't know. I thought, am I going nuts? Like, what's going on? Like, is this some kind of joke? Um, you know, that someone's playing on me. I didn't know what to think of it. Anyhow, this went on for, for like all of December, January. January is the time when I decided I wanted a change and, uh, you know, I, t I, I breached the subject with my boss and, you know, eventually he let me go um, unexpectedly. Like just before I had, a, I, I'd light up another job. I found another job and I didn't want to take it because the contract was just not up to my, my um my expectations and uh, just just put me in a in a worse position basically. So I decided not to do it. That's when I decided to do the, the I really wanted to have a go at the painting commissions, <clears throat> and that's when it sort of exploded from there. And got three three weeks of nonstop uh, communication and correspondence with people about getting quotes done, and it sort of took off. And my wife could see then it had potential, and that um, she gave her big boss blessing, and here I am. But before that, I would always get these. Always 9-11, 9-11, you know, either at night, 9-11, in the morning, 9-11. If I see it somewhere else, 9-11, it just happens so frequently. And I thought, you know, this is just going, this is just getting crazy. I think it was at the end of March. Yeah, end of March, just before I finished up my contract at work. And I thought, that's it. I'm going to Google this. So I did. <laughs> and I thought, you know, what the hell? What have I got to lose? So... Uh, I put in there something to search in Google, something like, you know, why am I seeing 9-11 on, on the clock or as a number all the time? And it comes up with this page now. It's from the Psych News Daily. Now, if I see something titled like that, I just do not, I just totally avoid those kind of pages. But I thought, what the hell, what have I got to lose? And I was, I was going to read it. <clears throat> this lady who's written it is very experienced in these kind of things. And she's got a lot of, she's written books and that kind of stuff about she she works in um, um, with numbers basically just numbers, and she finds some kind of you know she in her research finds some kind of 
um, hidden secret behind numbers or what have you. <clears throat> Seems like a very interesting lady. And she posted this article not so long before I actually started searching for it, which is uh, uh, uncanny enough. But basically she says the 911 angel number, meaning in bottles in bodies your extraordinary capacity to accomplish your goals and aspirations when encountering the number 911, view it as a powerful reminder to adopt a positive mindset, envision your desired outcomes, and embrace the belief that you can manifest your dreams into reality. Now, when I read that very profound statement, this has been a positive thing in my life. Like I've, you know, when I was young, I wanted to work for Games Workshop. It happened. Uh, then I wanted to work for the Heavy Metal Studio team. I got that job there. <clears throat> If you dream and, you know, I like to dream about things and make them a reality. I don't know if that's special to me. I don't know if that's, I think, if I think anybody can do it. I think it's just kind of, it's not necessarily fate. I think it's you're sort of forging your own destiny and in doing that, you're sort of making these connections and things just sort of come to you. I think if you have a very positive outlook on things and if you have a very negative outlook, it's sort of repelling these, um, these opportunities uh, in your life. So I've been a big believer in that. And th there was a time for a long time that I didn't have any dreams, didn't have any aspirations, had nothing. And what happened? My life completely stagnated for years and years and years, very unhappy. <clears throat> the point I got very depressed. And then I needed a change. And then I came to Japan and it just changed everything for me. So you know, having a positive mindset, being to envision your dreams and aspirations in the future is a very, very important thing. And that's kind of my message in what I'm saying here. Don't think I'm crazy. Don't think I've lost it. <laughs> it's very important that you have a very positive mindset and uh, you have a goal for yourself and for your family and for maybe for other people or whatever um, and uh, make those dreams come true. Now, when we talk about angels, okay, now we're talking to some kind of uh, uh, fairy kind of, <clears throat> uh, you know, People can believe it or not. I've always thought that, you know, angels would be a beautiful thing to think about your ancestors, your grand grandparents, your great grandparents, or your lineage of people that are part of you uh, here to look over, over you and to try to guide you. And I've always thought about my son when I had my son when he was born, that angels would come and look after him in his life and try to guide him along the right path uh, so that he would uh, avoid danger or avoid bad decisions or things like that. I think that's a really beautiful concept, you know, if anything. Um, <clears throat> so it says the most common interpretations of angel number 911 are that angels are close to you and that you, that they're here to help you achieve your goals. Likewise, it often means that there may be a new phase or wonderful change starting in your life. Well, they're not wrong there. Of course, its meaning may vary depending on how the number manifests itself in your life. But if you're seeing 91 a lot, 911 a lot lately, take a look at some of the explanations below to see what it probably means for your personality. Now, it covers a couple of different subjects, but um, the the one, the main one for me is that you know. It was a change in career. It was a change in um, my outlook on things. Um, and, you know, I won't lie. I think I told that last time March was hell for me, for my wife. Everything was just, just everything went up, just turned upside down. <clears throat> and it was just awful. It was like the worst time of my life. Um, luckily, I didn't get really depressed about it, but it could, I could have easily just gone down that depression rabbit hole again and and felt really bad about myself and the situation that I got myself into. Uh, but things took a turn and things started looking up. And in April, my favorite month of the year, uh, things got a hell of a lot better. So, <laughs> so maybe my angels are just trying to try and guide me through this really difficult time, this kind of like a test, uh, you know, how I handle it mentally, you know, this sort of setback, this, um, this big pitfall that I got myself into. And then once I've, once I've gone through that, um, yeah, everything was going to be back on, back on track. And we, you know, we're back to, you know, feeling and mentally my wife is smiling and happy. And I know she's a little bit stressed about everything, but she, you know, I can see a change in her as well. Like, you know, she's just, she's happy. And, uh, you know, I've got you guys to thank for that because yeah, I mean, 
that's all I want to wish for is my wife to be happy and my son also to have a good life. <clears throat> and um, and in doing the commission work and getting the quotes in and that kind of thing, you're you're you're, you're making that possible for me. So that's basically all that I wanted to say is that. Um, put your comments in below if you're having if you had a similar experience or something like that or you have some more information about the 911 number i'll be really interested to know about it my mother's very spiritual she's into spiritual art my mother has always been an artist uh ever since you know she was young she used to draw beautiful pictures in in the in the kindergarten she worked at uh, in, her, in the kids books story books and that kind of thing and then she went into uh, china painting she went into traditional art she's never been to any formal education apart from having um, drawing lessons, I think, with some famous artist on the Gold Coast many years ago. Mum's a really talented artist, and uh, you know, and then she went into like spiritual art and that kind of stuff. Uh, so I've sort of had, you know, dealings with spirit, spirituality, and all this kind of stuff. But it's a bit hard to take in. It's kind of like, yeah, okay, well, that's great, mum. You know, it's a bit overboard, and <laughs> I don't know. I don't think I can process it right now. And maybe it's, it's at certain times in your life when you when you can just sit back and then start trying to, you know, take in what you need and and trying to listen a bit more about you maybe you know just listening to yourself a bit more and about your. Um, I think a lot of that, you know, that guidance and that kind of thing is your intuition. I think that's what I'd like to link you know, my angels or ancestors trying to tell me, hey, this is the wrong path or this is the right path. You know, you should be doing this way. <clears throat> Anyhow, I could have completely cracked it by now, sitting in this room, <laughs> painting all day. But anyhow, guys, I hope I hope that was inter entertaining for you anyway, a bit of insight into my personal life, um, which I don't really, you know, breach uh, into very often. But um, yeah, hopefully that will give you some positivity. And that's what I really want to express here. Just be positive about things, even though they could be really gloomy and really shitty uh, at this time. And I, I know everyone's sort of struggling out there, but um, just try to find a positive outlet for yourself and, uh, and that'll make things better for yourself and people around you. I'm talking to some kind of guru now, aren't I? Heavy <laughs> led guru, guru painting services. Uh, so guys, look, I'm going to leave it there. We're going to go now to, uh, check on what the projects I'll be working on, uh, and things for the future. So to keep you excited to, to know what's happening, but, uh, again, thanks guys. And we'll see you now in just a moment with, um, what's been happening. Okay, guys, so let's go through what I've been working on. We've got some uh, nice sword masters here for a gentleman in the U S who's doing a large high elf army that I'm working on. So this is, these are actually my models that I'll trade for his uh, unpainted lead models when they arrive. We've got um, Carnifex's Slanesh army. Now I've got uh, a Storm Bolter to do that and a banner uh, to complete that one. It's been an interesting one because it came in a really terrible state, this thing, and uh, Carnifex knew that. <laughs> so it had been, it had seen the real wars, I think, at some stage. So I had to repair all the the sponsons on it and uh, pin those in there so it's it looks fairly decent but um yeah i think the paint job you know black was probably the best color just to mark yeah you know, just mask off all those horrible uh joins and that kind of thing the other person went a bit crazy with green stuff and uh, milliput i think at some stage uh we've got uh, marcus's um weevil miniature models here some egg bots which are terminators and the lord on steed yeah they were, they were quite fun to paint all the resin models I usually don't touch resin with a barge pole, but yeah, they weren't too bad. <clears throat> now these are the Renegades. Some are models from the old Perry Citadel range from Renegades. Some are from Nightmare Miniatures, and some are from Satai Miniatures. So it's a good mix there. I don't think I'm missing out anybody. I think they're the three companies they're from. The Noise Marines had a great time painting these guys, especially this guy. He is like the original heavy metal style paint job, but yeah, all 10 of these guys, all individually painted. None are exactly the same. So yeah, really enjoyed doing those. Um, so, and the Demonettes here. Some nice Demonettes. And then we've got the, the Terminator. Uh, sorry, the uh, Dreadnought as well, which is a really, really nice kit. I think a lot of people really like this one. So 
Um, now, as far as I know, someone's hand designed that one. It's not a print or anything like that. Someone's designed it and cast it in resin. So I'll try to leave a link about that in... Well, I can do it in the big, you know, the big, um, the final video for it anyway. This is just an update what I'm working on. And some character models. I've got like three sorcerers and one commander. So that's all of stuff for Carnifex. Been a great, great stuff to work on, mate. Thank you very much for this wonderful project. Now over here, this is my personal desk of stuff. I've got some dragon princes I'm working on. Uh, which I need to do the riders. I need to finish off the horses. But that's sort of been laid back with the commission stuff. It's been hard to get my own stuff out there and uh, working on that. That's my crown, Call of the Crown challenge. Sorry, GJ. It's not going to get done, mate. <laughs> so... I think tomorrow's the last day or something. <clears throat> uh, I've got some three evil sun dudes that um, I enjoyed painting just in the heavy lead painting um, tutorials. Uh, now this big gargant, I need to paint that up. So I'm going to do a video on that one covering yellow, painting yellow and that kind of stuff. I've got some Sarissa buildings here for Test of Honor. I do have some wonderful Perry miniatures, uh, Zenit miniatures, um, there is one model there from Foot. Oh no, two models from Footsaw, and I have one model that came with the Test of Honor Two um, box set. Really, really nice models. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful figures. Would you like to see Test of Honor being played? Let me know in the comments, because I really like this game. It's not going to be on the uh, Crown of Command. It'll be on a different channel altogether. But Paul seemed to like it as well when we played it. It's a really fun game. So, yeah, I would like to take that on to video and, and showing people and showcasing the beautiful models out there you can use, because you can get models from all different kinds of companies to um, to use with Test of Honor. It doesn't have to be through a, one particular manufacturer. Another, another project for myself is the Space Wolves. Okay, I did trade these <laughs> with Paul for his Blood Angel army, then I felt really bad about it, and then uh, I, we, tra we traded it back because he was more keen on doing Blood Angels than Space Wolves, so I'm happy about that. It was just that the grey was just so painful to paint that um, I thought, well, this is, my, uh, this is my challenge to myself and getting these painted up. So there is another squad of, uh, what are they called, Grey Hunters, um, to finish off this army. So I'm going to paint those up and paint some, do like a video blog on these guys as I'll go through the whole project. And and uh, so you can follow along with my progress there. That was always the intention to do that. Uh, I've got these wonderful miniatures from uh, Confrontation Continuum. That's Kyle's company in the US. Uh, so he's selling these miniatures. Uh, these, aren't, uh, these are unreleased. So this is a, a wonderful collaboration that I have to thank Kyle again for, because not only is models absolutely beautiful to paint, but of course they're for a game and a game world that I really feel uh, passionate about, which is uh, like Confrontation and Art Clash and all that, and Cadwellan. So yeah, really, really enjoy those. So I've still got two more of these Alahan uh, Reapers to do. There's two more designs here. So we're painting those this week. That's my that's my task this week, and these guys as well. <clears throat> We've got some um, Cadwellan guys manning a um, an, like an organ gun type thing. Got some undead and a wizard here as well. So really nice, based on Gary Chalk's uh, designs as well. So I'm really happy to be a part of that project. Uh, kind of is uh, Keeper of Secrets and a champion. Old Jesuit and champion of Slanesh, like the Emperor's Children champion guy. Painting those hopefully this week as well. Got some Chaos Dwarves. Now there'll be a video I'll be releasing about these guys in conjunction and collaboration with War Colors, showing off their new Nostalgia 94 set, painting the warrior there, pictured. Okay. So that's the stuff that I've got on the table. There are some other stuff in those boxes down there. There are some orders for other people. Thank you very much for sending those. The priority for me is to get all the commissions done. That's that's my that's my work. You know, from uh, you know, it could be ten hours a day that I'll be working on these guys. So, but um, I'm really really privileged to be able to give these guys um, yeah the service to do that. So there you go, guys. That's the update for this week.
Thanks again for watching the video guys. Thank you for subscribing and liking and commenting on the videos. I really appreciate that. Remember to share the podcast and the videos to like-minded people who would enjoy this content. And if you'd like to support the podcast and the YouTube channel, then please consider becoming a Patreon. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.